Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azerautomation.com and welcome to another video of our API testing with REST Assured and Cucumber course. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with simple GET operation and assert with REST Assured. All right, so let's get started. Simple GET operation with REST Assured is as simple as this. As you can see here, we have used the BDD style format, which is nothing but the given, when, and then format, where in the given, uh, given something like this, like given dot content type as JSON, that's the given. And for the when, I have called the dot get method to perform the get operation, where I have specified the URL, which is nothing but the HTTP colon double slash localhost colon 3000 slash post slash one. So this is the same URL that we discussed in our previous video while we were setting up our simple JSON server. And we also saw how we can use this path parameter to access the posts. And after that, finally, we need to do the assertion using the then method. So the then method has a dot body method, which has the author that I'm going to be verifying using the is method. Well, the is method that you can see over here is the hamcrest method, which is a library to perform different sort of mix and matched combination of assertions. And again, We'll be discussing about that while we start writing the code in this video, but don't worry about it yet. These are very, very simple. So this is a very simple get operation that we can do using REST Assured. And then comes get operation to verify collections. Well, there are many cases that the API will be returning as different collections of result, and we may need to verify all those results of the collection in one shot. And if you want to do that, you can use something like the contains in any order method. And again, it says contains in any order. So basically your result can be of any order and you can verify all the items with the tag as author for that. And then you can get all the values and then you can verify them and see if all the results are matching for that particular author. Very, very simple. So this is really, really handy to see that you can do contains in any order or contains in order or contains or has item method. There are so many different kinds of method combination that you can use to verify a collections or a non-collection element using these kinds of operations. And finally, we'll be also discussing about how that we can verify the status code. This is very, very simple. All you have to do is with this particular code, you're gonna call one more method called dot status code of 200, which will tell you that, all right, so this is the status 200. And if it is, then it's going to turn you true. If not, the assertion is going to throw you an error. Very, very simple. And these codes, you can keep on extending the way you want. We'll be discussing about that as well in this video. And you'll understand how easy it is in REST Assured that you can keep on extending your code as simple as possible. All right, so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to be flipping to our IntelliJ IDE. All right, so this is our IntelliJ IDE and this is the same project that we created in our first video of this course. So we are basically going to write a very, very simple feature this time. And I'm going to call this feature as verify different get operation using rest assured. So this is a very, very simple feature and we'll be using that. And then I'm going to write some scenario here. So the first scenario is going to be verify author or maybe verify one author of the host. So I'm just going to say given I perform post operation, verify I perform get operation for I'm just going to specify the post here slash post or maybe I can specify post here and I can specify and perform get for post number which is nothing but one then I should see the author name as Karthik KK so this is a kind of making use of cucumber and I know this kind of uh, redundancy in this particular area you can also make slash one in the first line itself but this is kind of more generic because you can keep on changing the number here and the post remains same forever. So you don't really have to modify that. So it's kind of little generic here, but again, you can keep on extending that the level that you want. So now I'm gonna start creating the step definitions for all the steps that we have written here. 
So for doing that, I'm just going to do an Alt Enter here, and you can see there is an option called Create Step Definitions. So I'm going to hit the Enter here, and you can see there is an option showing us like Create New Step Definitions File, and it asks us to choose the file type as Java or Java 8. So make sure you select Java because Java 8 will have the Lambda expressions there. So I'm not going to probably use that. So let, let's choose Java here. And for the step definitions, you can see there is no way that we can use the existing class file. So basically it's only the directory that I can pass, not the file name, which is kind of limitations that I won't say a big problem. So as of now, I'm just going to create this guy in here. And I basically do this. I just copy or maybe cut this particular uh, piece of step definitions. I paste it here directly and I delete the existing file that is created, which is kind of very easy and much easier to work with as well. And you can see that currently the step definition has been mapped automatically. You can see I can do control B and I can go to the particular uh, step definitions. Very, very simple. And then I have to implement the other two step definitions as well. So for that, I just have to enter Alt Enter here and create all the step definitions. And now we can see that this particular file name will be enabled. So now I can choose the file, which was not something available before. So I can do that and you can see all the step definitions will be popped up in here, right? So all the implementations are now going to be done very, very simply from here. But for the implementation side, you can see that our code is going to be a little different. And the reason is because, uh, let's say if we want to use the code for the given when then operation for the given when then fashions of code, then probably you have to split the code a little bit while you write the code actually. So again, I know it doesn't really make any sense for now. Let me start writing the code and you'll understand what I'm trying to make sense in here. So the first thing we need to do is to perform the get operation for uh, the post URL or the get URL. So here the URL is going to be more generic. So I can just put that in here and then I need to start writing the code, something like given. So you can see it will ask me, do you need to add the reference for the rest assured? Of course, yes. I need to add that. And then here I'm going to add the content type. So this is exactly the same thing that we saw in our slide before. So I'm just going to add that. And the content type is actually uh, a JSON. So I'm just going to do that. Right. And then yes, it says I perform the get arrange asset pattern the post number. So the post number is going to be something that we're going to be passing in dynamically. So uh, let's say this is the post number which I'm talking about. Right. And then in here, I need to pass something like, oops, not this one, uh, the rest assured when. When I need to perform get, and here I'm just going to say HTTP colon double slash of localhost colon 3000 slash, and here you need to pass the post number, which is going to be the one that you are passing in here. So basically, here you can use what is called as string dot format and I can just pass percentage yes and then the post number so that's going to be sitting in here and then I can write the then statement in here then I should see the author name as Karthik right so that's going to be then and you can see that we have a limitation right now the one which I used for given and the when I can do something like this, but for then statement, I cannot use in a different step definition method here. The reason is because the given and when can be a separate method. You can pass them in two different places in two different methods, even though they are automatically chained, but the then statement, you cannot write it in a separate method, something like this. The reason is because it is something that you need to work in conjunction with the get method. So you cannot do something like this in here. Rather, you need to write the code in here. So what I'm saying is you need to add the then statement over here and you need to add the verification in this particular method. And now I can just create 
the static import and you can see this code is legal so I cannot use the then statement here so this is exactly what I was telling while I was starting this particular given when then in this particular step definitions because the code that we are writing in like the simple get operation over here as a given when then in a single method it makes sense because this is already a BDD fashion but the one that we are using which is the cucumber is already a BDD fashion and while you try to write the given when then in an already available given when then fashion of cucumber it doesn't really make sense so this given when and then statement is probably going to be making more sense while we use in a traditional way of writing the code rather within the cucumber code itself so because it doesn't really make any sense to have a BDD fashion within a BDD specified language which is nothing but the cucumber so we cannot just use this format within our step definitions over here because it doesn't really make any sense to have two BDD mixed and matched within a single BDD format and that's why the best way to do is to split this particular BDD fashions of code as a arrange asset pattern that we saw before in our first video and we can make the code much meaningful and even understandable that we'll be doing in our upcoming videos of this course but as of now we will be creating a method over here in the Java folder and from there we'll be using it and then we'll be segregating the code so that it makes even more sense when we start using it but as of now don't worry about it all those complexities let's try to run this code and see if it really works so I'm just going to go to this particular feature and then I'm just going to run the selected uh, scenario oops so it seems like we have to change uh, the settings so you, if you get this kind of error you probably have to look for this JDK version the compiler version you can see it is 1.5 just change it to 10 because we are using compiler version 10 of JDK and also make sure that the project structure is language level of 10 if not it may throw error as well so I'm just going to run this selected test so I'm just going to run the scenario you can see it is going to run the scenario for us and there you go the test got passed which is pretty cool so you can see that if I change the post number to maybe 3 and now if I try to run this particular scenario I expect this test to fail there you go and the test got failed the reason is because we are expecting it to be Karthi KK this one but the actual value is uh, null so it is doing the verification for us in here right so this is how we can do the BDD kind of fashion within the cucumber code using this particular get operation but as you can see that the complexity of writing this kind of code within the BDD is not a feasible idea so for now before we start discussing with a non BDD style code of the rest assured I'm going to quickly create a file in here and then we're gonna call this as a wrapper file or something and then we'll start taking out this particular class once we start dealing with a non BDD code and then we'll start filling the particular code within this particular step definitions as of now let's try to create this particular BDD styled method class file and then here I'm going to start creating the method so I'm just going to call this as public void get post and then I'm just going to copy the code that we just wrote over here so I'm just going to copy this code I'm going to paste it and you can see I need to add the references and then also I'm going to copy this code and then I'm just gonna paste it over here there you go and for the post number we just need to pass the post number here which is nothing but the string post number right and there you go so this method is going to be more sensible right now so I can just call this method within any one of the step definitions regardless of wherever you want to pass but since the post number is been sitting in this particular I perform uh, get so I'm just gonna pass it over here and let's make this guy as a static method and we can call this as BDD style method there you go and within that I'm gonna pass the post number 
right? So that I can even delete this particular line of code for now. Just bear with me because we cannot mix two and two BDD style so code with the same as a BDD arrange as a pattern standard. So I'm just gonna call something like this. I know it's kind of ugly, and we are doing an anti pattern for now. Just don't worry about it yet. And now if I try to run this particular piece of code, this should work fine as we were expecting. I mean, it should fail right now. There you go. And let's make this as one. And if I try to run this selector test, this code is also going to work fine as expected, which means all of these codes are working fine without any problem right now. And the next operation of the get operation that we're going to do is to perform a get operation to verify if the collection is all correct or not. So we're going to verify all the collections. Again, I'm not really going to type the code. Rather, I'm just going to use the existing code that I have written. So you can see that this is the code which I'm talking about. So it says given the content type is this and get I'm going to do using this when method. And you can see that when the get is localhost colon 3000 post on one and the author is the one which I'm passing in in the body. And I'm going to say contains in any orders of Karthi KK, Karthi KK and null, right? So this we can write something like a scenario, something like this, and I can just do an implementation over here. I know it doesn't really make sense in here as well, but as of now, just bear with me while we talk about the non BDD style, this codes are going to be more meaningful as well. So I'm just going to do the implementation, something like this, perform containing collections, just going to save it. And now if I try to run this particular scenario from here, you can see that it's going to verify all the collection and the test is eventually going to pass, but you can see that it is currently failing. It says that it doesn't really match the actual is Karthi KK, but what we're getting, we're expecting is Karthi KK, KK and null, which is really, really cool because you can see that this particular perform in collection, we are trying to see for one particular post, only if we make for all the posts, you can see that it is going to return you all the value, which is something you can see that we could able to verify as well. So now if I try to make this collection to all the posts as like this, and now if I try to run this particular piece of code, you can see that the test got passed. So now I could able to verify all the collections of elements using this particular code, right? So this is another operation that we can do. And the final operation is about the status code. So in order to verify the status code, I'm not really going to create a separate scenario for that. Rather, I'm directly going to put a status code here. And I know that the status code for this particular server is actually 200. So of course, so I'm just going to arrange as a pattern here. here. And then if I try to run this particular test, you can see that our server is currently running and it is going to get a 200, which is cool. And the test got passed. So if you feel like it is going to return you 204 or something like that. And now if you try to run this, you can see that the test will eventually fail because the actual output is 200, but the status score that we're expecting is 204. And it will show you the expected and the uh, actual result, right? So this is how you can verify a simple get operation using this particular fashion. In our next video, we'll again try to confuse the given when then scenarios pretty much like the same kind of fashion, but from the upcoming videos will be modifying the given when then fashions into a non BDD fashions of coding so that we can make use of the cucumber scenarios more efficiently than the one that we are doing right now using these kinds of method operation. That's it guys. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.